Welcome everybody, my name is Miles, and it's a great day to learn how to solder. I'm gonna go through how to extract stuff from boards, what solder to use, about the gun, temperature, how to maintain it, and I'll go through and put a jack on a, like you would replace a jack on a DC adapter. I'll put one of those on, um, go through how to solder wires together, parts together, go through, extract something from a, a board and put it back on. And that'll be more like the second half that I'll do. And I'll go through all the, all the mistakes I've made in the past. And I've, at solder stations, vacuum guns, hot air guns. I mean, I've had it all and they all have their purpose. But I'll show you what I have used since day one and still use. That's the best that I use for majority of the projects or desoldering when I have to desolder something. But first, I'm gonna go through my background. 40 years ago or so, they taught you how to solder. They, that was part of the course. Um, it was a one year uh, degree. And there are things that they wanted you to bring to class, I mean, th that you had to have for the class. I was a solder sucker, I had to bring lead and, I, and a gun. Everything else they kind of provided that I can remember. All the sub boxes for resistor and caps, I think we all had them. I think they, they provided them. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive of that. We each had our own workstation, our own area. And you walked into a room that had, I don't know, 20 something people, big U shaped room. And then we each all had our category. And he would teach from in front, like in the middle. Um, he told us the first week that he has a 50% dropout rate. He said half of you will not be here. I even felt like he felt he's, he wasn't doing his job unless half the people weren't going to survive. Um, and he said, if you're on a free ride, somebody's paying for this for you. He said, you probably won't make it. You won't have the right attitude. So it's going to be a hard course, and it was tough. It was all hands-on. You better be a hands-on type person. Um, one of the first things we did after we learned about all the circuits, all the components, how to test them, we built an oscillator, and we all had to do a presentation on it. And that oscillator, we took the output and made to control the wave, do certain things with it. Um, if you overdriven it, it would saturate it and make your, your signal a square wave because you oversaturated it. Well, that's almost like a on switch versus an off switch. And that's how you get a one and a zero. And that's how uh, digital is. So that's the digital world. So that was interesting to learn that process, part of it. And after that, we built a, a nice radio uh, three-stage super heterodyne radio, 455 kilohertz. You get a D if you picked up anything, just you get a C if you could understand what they're talking about and it didn't sound too bad, maybe a B if he liked you. <laughs> and then an A, um, if you could pick something outside of our area and that sounded pretty good. So that was pretty cool. But we built a lot of different types of circuits and we really didn't know what they were for, but every time we built a circuit, found out that it was gonna be for something. And we built a 600 volt power supply. And that's when you learned how one hand in Pocky, no shocky. That was, he learned that or you learned the hard way. And then he was part of the um, military and he had an outlet where we could pick up stuff we all, most of us picked up a scope, a cap checker, and it's kind of some cool stuff that the military had and got it for almost nothing. And then he brought in some 
one inch TV tubes that were, I don't know, 10, 11 inches in length. And we built a TV. I watched either, I thought it was the first shuttle that went up in an early 80s. You could just see a dot. That was kind of cool. You wouldn't even know it was a shuttle unless you said, hey, that's the shuttle's going up right now. Um, then after that, towards the end of the year, we did a lot of repairs on everybody's equipment. People would bring us their TVs were the most thing that we got and receivers, amps, all that stuff. We got everything, which was kind of cool because then you learned from the person next to you what he was doing. And then of course you had yours. And so everybody kind of shared their learning experience. Um, so that was pretty neat. In the last couple of weeks, we would, all anything that wasn't repairable and he had, he collected boards through the year, through that year. And we'd take parts out of them and refill the bins up that we've been pulling parts out of all year long. That's why when we pull parts out of those bins, you had to take them over the curve tracer or put your meter on them, depends on what it was, to find out um, if it was good or not. <laughs> so that was that was interesting. We're, now I knew where all those parts came from and why some of them were bad. So when I finished that one year course, I thought I could go out and get a job I um, went out and applied for my first job. They gave me a logic board, had a 16 pin chip on it. And they said, go and take that chip out. Um, and of course the last couple of weeks we've been saving every part. We didn't damage any part coming out of the board if we could help it. And this chip was one of the one that was not designed to come out. <laughs> and I, I got everything out except when I, the, when I, Pulled it out, the very last thing, the, the pin broke off. Just a little piece of it. And it took me like 15, 20 minutes. And I, so I almost got it out. But when I went over to him, he said that should only have took a few minutes. I'm like, what? And I found out that he wanted me to cut the pins, get the chip out of there, and just touch the gun on each of the pin and pull them out, and then clean up your mess. That only took a few minutes. That was a piece of cake. Instead, I'm trying to take the whole thing out as, as if we were going to use it again. <laughs> I didn't get that job. But it was a good experience. Um, he talked me into going on for another couple years, set me up with a job. Um, so I went another two years of electronics, which was pretty cool because that's when I found out applying math to everything and that's when I found out that the one year course was convectional meaning all the arrows went from negative to positive but when I took the two year course and applied math to everything in the circuits they had the arrows positive going to negative conventional which was pretty cool <laughs> just coming at it from a different angle so I learned a lot um, so the second half, I'm going to go through and, and do nothing but hands-on. I'm going to share my 40 years of experience. I'm Because if you don't, what good is it? So let me get the camera set up. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go through with solder first. Um, 40 years ago or so around there. The thing we had to bring to class the first day, solder, 60-40, rosin core, meaning it's hollow in the middle. There's flux in there. Solder sucker, this was it right here. Same looking thing, same size, same everything. Still the number one solder sucker today. I And I've tried... I've tried them all. I've tried them all. The only reason why I kept them, and I don't know why, is because I had a place for them, a bin to put them in. <laughs> Two types of solder, size solder that I use, a 32nd, which is nice, but there's not a lot of flux in the middle, but it's great for small jobs. If you're not going to use much solder, and 
the um, 16th of an inch, which I'd like to use most if I can get away with it. And the reason why, because there's a lot of flux in here. The other thing it told you to bring was a solder gun and he told you not to turn it on. So I'm gonna turn on, here's what you do the first time. If you look at a solder gun, the tip, when they're fresh like this, new like this, if you can see it, the tip has a different color. There's a different material they dip the tip in so it can hold solder better and because it has to be clean. It has to be nice and shiny, it has to be, always be clean, if it's not, you can't have a nice and shiny joint like you're supposed to. So your tip, your only good is your tip. So I turn it on. Let's say this is a brand new tip I just put in here. When it comes up to, to um, temperature, put some solder on it. Lots of solder. Make sure you get a nice coat on there. And it should be nice, shiny, and clean. I have a sponge here with water and I have a Brillo pad in here for scraping it in case you get some of the black off. Whatever it takes to get your gun to be nice and shiny and clean, and be, especially before you put it away. You notice I'll shake the old solder off, put fresh solder in there before I put it away. When I get done using it or when I'm in between stuff, I want to keep it clean. You can buy this stuff, it's called tin cleaner. It's and put your. I'll use this before I put my gun away. Depends how if I need to want if it's if I'm struggling cleaning it before I put it away and get done using it. You never let a gun sit there for long periods of time with it on. You're better off to shut it off short periods of time. Just keep it clean. Um, I'm gonna go go through and I'm gonna show you what I do because it's soldering. Sometimes, lots of times, it takes a third hand. To create a third hand, so you don't have to hold the solder, I'll just take do about five or six wraps. And this is lead. 60% tin, 40% lead. The two combined have a lower melting point, which makes it great for soldering. And what I'll do is I'll just wrap it around, make some loops, and then wrap this around. If you go to the end, you just come back and you bend it. And there's your third hand right there. Now when you solder something, I'm gonna solder something up for you. When you solder something, wire, you got to tint one side so it looks nice and shiny, just like your tip is supposed to look. And then when you're going to solder something to it, you have to tint the other side. I'm going to make sure I get the glue off of here or from the tape. <laughs> Try not the best thing to grab to show you how to do it. And then the other side. If your soldering gun's clean, it only takes three or four seconds to make that shiny. You don't want a big blob on, but you want to make sure you have solder on it. And then what you do is just put the two together. As long as they have fresh solder, your tip is clean. It should only take three or four seconds. If I can stop moving. The, the solder that they recommend the 60-40, um, 60% tin, 40% lead, and has a lower melting point, but it also only takes less than a second for it to get hard. If you use anything but, it just takes longer time for it to get hard and you cannot move it while it's going through the process of getting hard. And you notice that joint is perfect. There's no lines between it. You cannot break that. It'll break like any weld. It'll break in a different spot. 
but it's important that you hold it steady still. So instead of this wire being moved around, being free, I made sure it was solid. And then I soldered it so I could hold it without it be moving it. You don't want to move it if you can help it. And I did move it a little bit because I was, so I did it, had to do it twice. So I'm a little bit shaky right now. That's how you solder wire. To make different tips for this, if you got thicker wire, you'll have to go to a thicker tip. Not always, only if you struggle. You can tell I've never used this one because I just made sure my, I used the right solder. I used enough solder and my tip was super clean. And I got a gun over here that I can turn up. Right now I got it at 570. I can turn it up to 630 in that area if I need more heat. But usually I don't, I, that's where I leave it. I, if it's 530 and I got something really delicate, like micro jacks, I just hold it on there for a sec. I just don't leave it on as long. Sometimes you need more flux. This stuff is hollow. You get bouts of it where there's nothing in there. And you can tell because you're struggling. And you might have to put more flux on it. Flux comes in different styles. That's what it looks like. That's the color of it right there. Or you can use a flux pen. This is not a flux pen. I don't know how that magic marker got in there. That's a magic marker. <laughs> this is it. I started looking at it and it's blue. And it runs, this one runs out a lot. I mean, it just runs like water. This one does not. Also bought recently a um, solder gun. On eBay. If I can find the tip for it. It was just here, I think it just fell to the bottom. Where'd that tip go? Oh, here it is, it fell to the thing next to it. And I lost the thing. But I really like this thing. It's pretty cool. It's great for small jobs. It's not a high wattage thing. I like it because it shuts off by itself. Just tighten that down. It's better to use this thinner soft solder because this takes a little longer to heat up. So if you're gonna leave something on for three seconds, you gotta hit this button to make sure it gets warm. It takes about 10, 12 seconds to get warm. And I, I can barely see the light because I'm covering up my finger that it's on and it shuts off by itself too. It just shut off. So you only get like 10 or 15 seconds and this thing beeps and doesn't beep, but it flashes and shuts off. I think it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I soldered a micro jack recently with it and it was awesome because the micro jack pins are, are extremely small and you have to put it right on top of it like that the other pins are so close together that if you're not dead on top, you go like that, you just soldered two together. So you have to put it on dead center on top of it without shaking. So I gotta make sure I don't have anything, sugar or anything like that before I solder. And you put it on top of it and you pull it off. Touch it, heat both up, tint, two, both are tinted of course, and then you pull it off. And you have to do that for, usually the one, that, one I just did recently was five of them. They're very close together. But this worked out perfect for that. But then I tried to solder the case, like a like a bigger area, like stuff like this that everything's tied to, the ground or the, the main voltage. You can't heat this up. This does not have enough wattage. You have to have a gun like this. And you have to have it where you can turn it up to past 600, my experience. But that thing is cool. So I'm going to solder a jack on for you. Let me get the right kind of jack to solder on for you. Did 
to solder on a jack. It's nice to have something. I don't have a, my vise doesn't clamp on here. It's too thick. I need to get a vise that just sits here, I guess. I guess I do have a suction one that I've, I find it's better just to do this with a hemo. Or if you have a pliers, just wrap rubber band around it three times. And do it that way. There's your vise right there. So here I have a jack, and I'm gonna make a mistake just to, because this happens. So I'm gonna tint both sides, clean my tip, wipe it off. I'm gonna tint that side, nice and shiny, not quite. I can see it's not all the way around. I'm gonna tint this side where it goes. Not much on there. I hardly put anything on. As long as you see it flow, take it off right away. And then I can put the two together. I'm probably blocking what I'm doing. I'm struggling a little bit because my tip needs to be clean. My tip is <laughs> shaking off the old solder. You know you did it right if you got the right temperature. And there it is. That that joint will not break. It will not break. I could actually held it on there a little bit longer. So it's not as shiny as I'd like. So the mistake I made, of course, was not put on the cover. And I did that on purpose. So say you forgot to put on the cover. You gotta re-solder it. Again, you have to tint both sides. both sides it's, and be careful you don't put too much solder on because now it's going to bulk up and I actually wiped it off sometimes you have to if you get too much on there just shake it off and now with a clean tip putting solder in here shaking it off put it on if you don't do this you're not going to get a clean joint it's going to look terrible I see a strand that's hanging there that I didn't get, obviously. My look joint looks better than the first time I did it. Nice and shiny. You can't even tell. It's just a, a nice ball of solder. Now I can put my cover on. But anytime you have to redo something, make sure you're tinting both sides again. As far as the logic board, removing something or put something on, this is probably not a good board, but maybe a little more difficult board because it has a coat, um, either epoxy or um, polyurethane or some or uh, lacquer. Looks like it's lacquer that they put on here, so it's a little bit thicker. So I might have to keep the gun on a little bit longer. Plus. They have it where the components they put through, they bend it on either side like that. They put it through, bend it, holds it. Otherwise, it just falls out. So it makes it a little bit easier for them. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to remove. I'm going to pick something on here to remove. This is just a resistor. You can't just put your gun on it and put a solder sock on it and remove it. You can't just do that. You have to put solder on it.
get rid of the old solder. Once you see a curl of smoke come up and it goes away, there's no more flux. That solder is gone, it's used. Can't be used again. That's why you always gotta retint. Now when I put my gun on there and suck it out, and I'm putting the gun on until I see the solder kind of just melt. Even though I just desoldered, I can see a hole where it pulled it all out. It's still not loose. It is not loose. If it was a big jack like this, right now I would put nice. I would put the gun on it after I see the holes. After I sucked it out, I'd put the gun on it and move it around, and keep it moving. Move it while it's drying. If you move a joint while it's drying, it will not. It'll be loose. It'll free itself. So that's how to free up a jack of something big like this so you can pull it out. Otherwise, you can desolder it and you still can't get it out. You actually got to heat it up again and move it back and forth. Then you can pull it off. So now the pins are bent over. I got to deal with that. Two ways I can deal with it. I can either use a... Heat it up and use this to bend it up. But what I find what works a lot of times, you got to be careful you don't damage the trace. Is I put the, the gun on it and I bend it up. You got to be careful you don't damage the trace. This stuff here, I, I'm not going to really damage it because there's a coat on it, coating on it. And once you get that, you can grab your spudge. Make sure I get the right one and peel it up. That's it. If you struggle with one side a little bit, put the gun on it, wiggle it around, and pull it out. So I'm gonna make sure that I put this back in, because this is a good board that I repaired for my furnace. Straighten these back out. I'm gonna remove, I'm just wiping, I'm just grabbing it and wiping the excess, uh, the old. Solder off. I'm gonna set this back in here. Hold it with my finger. I like holding the stuff with my finger because I can tell how hot it is, especially with a chip. Put your hand on it. If it gets too hot or you can't touch it, that's too hot. These jacks, they're all plastic around it that separates the two metals and so forth that surrounded it. You don't want to keep it on more than six or seven seconds because it'll damage the jack. This is the part where if you got caught in my class, in the class that I was taking, you get hollered at. He did not like you carrying your solder. Carrying your solder, because right now, I have to hold it on. I can't let up, otherwise it falls out. So what I'll do, I, I forgot to clean my tip before I put it away, so I'm gonna struggle here. If you're struggling like this, it's because you put it away without cleaning your tip, putting new solder on it, new flux. So I'm gonna do that a couple times. I'm gonna scrape it with a little bit of solder in there and it's still smoking. I can come over here now. And that'll hold it. Now that won't fall out of the board. I'm not gonna worry about bending it over because I'm gonna solder, do a good job of soldering. I'm gonna solder the other side, just in case I push it through, back through that it's nice tight against the board. Now I can solder both sides again, just to make sure I got a good, good clean joint, a good solder joint. I'm 
and that's it. I'm gonna scrape a little bit. You can clean off the board with alcohol and a soft brush. Toothbrush works the best. I got all kinds of little blobs here from cleaning my gun. Just inspect the board, make sure you don't have any blobs. These blobs just break right off right away because it dries, solder dries so fast. I'll inspect my job. And scrape it a little bit here with my fingernail. That's about all I need to do. There's the spot that I did right here. I did this spot right there, those two. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm hoping you can. That's a solder dryer. It should look nice and shiny like everything else is shiny in here. Again, I'm gonna clean my gun. And I'm done using it now. So I'm, what I'm gonna do when I struggle with it a little bit, is I'm gonna use this tinner that you can buy or just, just keep putting the solder on it. Either you can do this right here, scrape it off, or you can just put solder on it. Shut my gun off. My gun is off right now. While it's cooling down, because you want to put it in there with a big blob on it. Nice big, big chunk of blob. A blob of solder. I should say a blob of flux. That's it. That's 101, 102, and 103 of soldering. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button, all that good stuff. Have a good day.